Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at fat digestion and absorption. We're moving our way through the gastrointestinal tract. I'm gonna to highlight to you the different areas of this tract that helps us digest these fats into smaller subunits and where they get absorbed. Let's take a look. Okay, to begin, let's highlight what we've got. We've got our oral cavity, including our tongue, our esophagus here. We've got our stomach. We move through from our stomach into our small intestines, which is made up of our duodenum and then our jejunum. Here we've got a duct that connects the pancreas, liver and gallbladder into the duodenum. Very important in this topic. And then towards the end here, we've got our individual brush border cells, not as important when it comes to fat digestion as it is carbohydrate and protein. An enterocyte, where the fat needs to be absorbed into, and from the enterocyte, it needs to get absorbed either into the lymphatic system or the bloodstream. We'll talk about that in a sec. So let's begin. We are eating a delicious cheeseburger made up of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. I've spoken about in other videos, the proteins and the carbs. Let's focus on what happens with the fats. So remember that when we talk about fats, we are predominantly referring to triglycerides. And so when we talk about a triglyceride, for example, it's going to have a glycerol backbone. So we've got glycerol here as a backbone and it's going to have three fatty acids attached to it. So these here are fatty acids. Now, as you know, fatty acids can be of all different sorts, different lengths. So you can have long chain fatty acids, medium chain, short chain, chain and so forth. So you can have a whole multitude of different types of fatty acids attached to the glycerol. Together, we have tri, three fatty acids, glycerol. So this whole thing here is what we refer to as a, whoops, as a triglyceride. Triglyceride or sometimes it's referred to as a triacylglyceride, T-A-G. That's ultimately what we're ingesting, but we're not only ingesting triglycerides. We also ingest phospholipids. We ingest cholesterol. And we ingest fat soluble vitamins. And remember the fat soluble vitamins you can remember with D, E, K, and A. So DECA, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, vitamin A. So these are all the important fat soluble things that we can ingest and eat that need to undergo this particular process. So first step, in the oral cavity, we have some glands called von Ebner's glands in the tongue. I'll write that down. Von Ebner, von Ebner's glands in the tongue. And what they secrete are lipases. So the von Ebner's glands can secrete a little bit of lipase. Now lipase is the enzyme, the molecular scissors, that can start chopping off these fatty acids. But what you need to remember is that when we ingest fat, just like oil in a pan, right, it tends to come together to form globules. And those globules are gonna contain the triglycerides, the phospholipids, the cholesterol and vitamins D, E, K, and A. They're all gonna to be together in this fat soluble, uh, in, in this fat globule. So these lipases, yeah, they do a little bit of a job of trying to chop them up, but they're not doing a brilliant job. By the time we get into the stomach, the stomach has these things called gastric pits. Now, an important cell type in the gastric pits, which we spoke about in the protein digestion and absorption video, are the chief cells. And I said in the protein digestion and absorption video that the chief cells, they produce pepsinogen. They also produce gastric lipase. Gastric lipase. Here, we produced lingual lipase because it's the tongue but here we're producing gastric lipase. And gastric lipase probably digests around about 15%, 15% of the fat that we're ingesting. Not a huge amount, but significant. And again, they are molecular scissors that are gonna get released to help 
chop it up. Now you might be thinking, again, we've got a globule here, a big collection, how's it chop it up? Well, through the chewing process, through the swallowing process, and through the stomach's ability to uh, contract and jackknife and squirt, this begins to emulsify. That's a term where it starts to break down mechanically. So these lipases can, like I said, not much, but can start to chop these things up. So what we end up getting by the time we move through our stomach is we still have these large fat globules with triglycerides, with phospholipids, with cholesterol, and with all the fat soluble vitamins, but we will also have some free fatty acids, right? That have been chopped off and they're moving through. So they're gonna move through into the duodenum. And what we have in the duodenum, which again, I spoke about in the other videos of protein and carbohydrate digestion, digestion are these cells here. And these cells, if you remember, are called enteroendocrine cells. Enteroendocrine cells. And what, so entero gut endocrine, they're releasing something into the bloodstream. That's what endocrine cells do. What they release is CCK. I'm sure if you watch my other videos, you were saying that out loud with me. And I said CCK stands for cholecystokinin. And again, I told you that cholecysto means gallbladder, kinin means to contract. What CCK does is it tells the gallbladder to contract. And I said, this isn't that important in protein digestion and carb digestion, but here it is because what we have is the liver produces something called bile. And bile, I've done a whole video on bile if you wanna know the specifics, but bile contains some important things. One of the most important things it contains are bile salts. And the liver producing the bile salts gives it to the gallbladder to store and concentrate. Now, bile salts basically have the amphipathic, the amphipathic, ugh, amphipathic meaning they have both a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic side to it. So it's going to have a hydrophilic head to it and it's going to have a hydrophobic tail. That is a bile salt right there. That loves water, that hates water, and that's a bile salt. Now think of it like a detergent, because that's its function, right? So when CCK gets released, and it gets released because fatty acids have stimulated it, hydrochloric acid from the stomach have stimulated it, and other broken down nutrients like amino acids have stimulated it, that CCK travels to the gallbladder and tells it to contract, just like it says in the name. And so what will happen is the gallbladder will squirt its bile into the duodenum. And what it does, this bile salt, is it starts to further emulsify this larger fat globule. Effectively, it does this. It breaks it up into smaller fat globules, like that, which will have the bile salts all through it, right? So you're gonna have bile salts here, and here, in this one, with the hydrophobic tail inside. So what that does is it basically breaks that surface tension that's formed to allow for it to be split into smaller molecules so that something else important can happen. In the other videos I told you that CCK also travels to the pancreas to tell it to release its pancreatic juices. And one of these pancreatic juices that it releases is pancreatic lipase. So we've got lingual lipase, gastric lipase, and now we have pancreatic lipase. And the pancreatic lipase is again molecular scissors that can now do a better, more efficient job of chopping up these triglycerides that are inside. So what do we end up getting? We end up forming a collection of bile salts and inside We've got fatty acids, we've got glycerol, 
We've got cholesterol, vitamins D, E, K, A. We've got phospholipids. We've got a whole bunch of stuff inside. And these things are called mycels or mycels. They're effectively broken down bits of the fat surrounded by the bile salts. And what they do is they allow for this to travel to the wall of the intestines and the bile salts help facilitate the diffusion. Because remember, all of our cell membranes are made up of a phospholipid bilayer, lipid soluble stuff. So unlike the other videos where I said we need specific channels or transporters, they don't. And so what the bile salts will do is they'll help facilitate the movement of these substances through. And what gets left behind are the bile salts. So we've got these bile salts left behind. But what it's allowed to push through are free fatty acids, glycerol, cholesterol, phospholipids, vitamin D, E, K, A. It's pushed it through. Now, you might think, what happens to these bile salts? I've done a whole video on this. What the bile salts do is they continue through. 5% will turn to poop but the other 95% will get reabsorbed back into the liver. That's called the enterohepatic circulation of bile salts. So now we've got all of these monomers of triglycerides and fats inside of the enterocyte. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus help package these things up. So they package them up and what they package them into are an important product. It strangely brings the fatty acids and glycerol back together to reform the triglycerides. We have cholesterol, we have phospholipids, we have vitamin D, E, K and A in this lipid soluble molecule here. And we pop a hat on it. This is called ApoB. So it is a lipoprotein, so it's got fats and proteins on it. And once you've got this ApoB on it and we've reassembled everything in the enterocyte, this thing is called a chylomicron. And what this chylomicron can do is again, through exocytosis, through the process of exocytosis, it will release the chylomicron into the lymph, not into the bloodstream like the others, but into the lymph. And what this does, because the reason why is this chylomicron is too big to move into the bloodstream. That's why it's too big. So it goes into the lymph. And what this chylomicron can do with all the stuff inside and its little Apo B hat is it can go to the organs of the body. We can now start distributing all the fat soluble, important fat soluble vitamins, cholesterols, triglycerides to the organs of the body that require it. Now, ultimately, the lymph will reconnect with the thoracic duct and then the subclavian vein. I suppose I better write that down. It will connect with, with the thoracic duct, thoracic duct, and then the subclavian vein and allow for it to rejoin the bloodstream. There we go. And so what we've done is we've taken fats like triglycerides, broken them down into their fatty acids and glycerol, allowed for them to be absorbed and then repackaged as triglycerides in a product called a chylomicron. And then that goes into the lymph to go to organs to say, hey, you need some cholesterol, you need some fats. And then whatever's left will jump back into the subclavian and ultimately will go to the liver. And so this is fat digestion and absorption. I'm Dr. Mike. Hope that helps. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.